Now that we have our screenshot captured and placed on a slide, we'll go ahead and create those detailed views for each of the areas that we wish to emphasize in our interactive screenshot. Now I can go ahead and insert and grab a new screenshot of my application or I can work from uh, the default uh, image that I'm working with already here on the slide. And I'm just going to do that. I mean, I could go in here and, and take another one, but I already have a good a version of it. Even though it's been reduced, we can always get it back to 100%. So I'm just going to press Control-C to get a copy of that. And you could also right-click if you wanted. And we'll come over here in the Slide Layers panel. We'll create a new slide layer. Now this is where we'll create each of those uh, detailed views that the learner will use to explore that particular part of the uh, the application. So I'm going to call this first one Binder. Now Binder is just this panel right here in Scrivener. So that, that's what works there. Control V to paste what I just copied, right? So here it is on the, uh, the background graphic, uh, the original slide with the screenshot. And here's the one I just pasted on my Binder layer. Now I'm going to do a couple things here. I'm going to zoom out quite a bit just so we can work comfortably. If I want to get this image, which is larger than my slide size, back to 100%, I can't just come up here to Format and Reset Picture and Size. If I do that, it resets it to a size that does not exceed the actual slide area, either vertically, horizontally, or both. So what I need to do if I want to get this to 100% is right-click the image and choose Size and Position. Now, Size and Position gives me access to its original height. So I'm just going to change the height to 100. And since this lock aspect ratio is enabled when I tab, it'll set both of these to 100%. So now I just have this image at 100%. And if I zoom in, you can see that it looks really great. So I'll go ahead and pull that back just a little bit. So at this point, I want to create a crop around my image. So grab the crop tool. And I'm just going to crop around the binder area down maybe make it a little bit bigger here and I can also if I like I can change some settings in this uh, to make some additional and fine-tune it so maybe I'll change it to 232 so now it's a perfect square I could zoom in a little bit more to see what I'm doing but you can see that it's obviously a lot larger than what we had down below I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just Make it a picture shape out of it. So the oval, of course, you can do any kind of style you like, and there just kind of crops a nice circle around the image. And we'll add a border, maybe give it just a little bit more weight. Again, how you want to stylize this and create this effect is totally up to you, but uh, you have a lot of options here with even the built-in picture tools. And maybe we'll just, just because we should, right, it drop shadow on it. And next, we'll probably add a caption, just something to put some text in. Again, we're just going to go through this kind of quickly just to add something. Send it to the back. Right? Play with it all day. Add as much of this as you like. But now we're essentially starting to get you know a, a call out for this. And I can get rid of that. What I also might do to kind of simulate that light box effect is add my own shape here that I'm going to use to cover the bottom, the, the entire slide area. And this will essentially help me simulate what a lightbox slide would do. I probably don't want to use Storyline's built-in lightbox because what Storyline's lightbox will do is actually resize to 80% of its nat of its original size. So if I do that, then I'm going to kind of resize the screenshot area that I want my learner to explore at that original 100% uh, resolution. So I'm not going to do it that way. I'm not going to use a lightbox in this example and maybe just bring this somewhere around there, just so we can see a little bit of the original uh, base layer, and I'll send that to the back. Again, if I want to add some highlights and callouts. Now I probably want to add a close button because we're going to be on a slide layer, and there's really no way to get back to it without another trigger, so we want to add a button. And I'm just going to add a really quick button here, but the, however you want to stylize this or bring in custom graphics, you can do that. And we'll add a hide layer, this layer, when I click, right? So there's essentially my layer. What I would do is I would then duplicate this slide layer for each of the additional slide layers and detailed views that we wish to show. I'm just going to work with this one here, and I'm going to return to my base layer, where in the next example, the next tutorial, we'll actually add the interactive buttons that load the slide layers.